What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today I'm going to be discussing the second standalone film in the bigger Star Wars saga, 2016's Rogue One, starring Felicity Jones, Diego Luna, Ben Mendelsohn, Donnie Yen, Mads Mikkelsen, Alan Tudyk, Forrest Whitaker, Jimmy Smits, Genevieve O'Reilly, Anthony Daniels, and James Earl Jones. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And as I said during the intro, today we're going to be discussing the second standalone film for the day of the bigger Star Wars saga, Rogue One from 2016. And I'm going to go ahead and get to this here right now, and I'll touch more on it again at the end of the um, review. But I'm just going to throw this out here right now. Much like Solo yesterday, this is a film that I didn't really feel needed to be made. I felt like there was enough dialogue in A New Hope to set up where the stolen Death Star plans came from that we didn't really need an entire film about them stealing them. So let me just throw that out there now, but let's get right into it here, shall we? Our film opens with research scientist Galen Urso and his family in hiding on the planet of Lahimu. Imperial weapons developer Orson Krennic arrives and he tries to pressure Galen into completing the Death Star, a space station which is capable of destroying entire planets. Lyra, Galen's wife, is killed during the confrontation, but their daughter Jin is able to escape and is rescued by Saw Gera, a rebel extremist. We then jump ahead 15 years, and cargo pilot Bodhi Rook defects from the Empire, taking with him a holographic message recorded by Galen Erso, with instructions to deliver it to Sagera on the desert moon of Jedha. Cassian Andor, a rebel intelligence officer, learns of Bodhi's defection and the Death Star from an informant while Jin Urso is located and freed from an Imperial labor camp at Wobani and brought to rebel leader Mon Mothma. Mon Mothma convinces Jin to find and rescue her father Galen in an effort to help the Alliance learn more about the Death Star. However, Cashin is ordered to kill Galen rather than instruct him. Jin, Cashin, and K2SO, a reprogrammed Imperial droid, travel to Jedha, where the Empire is removing kyber crystals from the Holy City and able to help power the Death Star. And kyber crystals are the source of a lightsaber's power. So since the Jedi are all but extinct in this film, and we don't know yet of Obi-Wan or Yoda's existence in the bigger story or where they're hiding there's no need for kyber crystals there's no jedi there's no lightsabers aside from vader the Gera and his associates are engaged in an armed insurgency against the empire and jin and Cashin end up meeting sharut imwe who's a blind spiritual warrior and his friend, Baze Malbus, who helped Jin make contact with Gera, who has been holding Bodhi Rook captive. Saw shows Jin the holographic message from her father, in which Galen reveals that he built a flaw into the Death Star, a vulnerability that, if triggered, could destroy the entire space station. Galen then tells them to obtain the schematics from an Imperial databank 
located on the planet of Scarif. Meanwhile, on the Death Star, Orson Krennic orders a low-powered test shot, which destroys Jeddah's capital. Jin and her crew take Bodhi Rook with them, and they flee the moon. Gera remains behind, however, and dies with the city. Krennic is congratulated by Grand Moff Tarkin, who then overtakes control on the Death Star project, citing Rook's defection and security leak as his reasoning for overtaking the, the, the ship there, the station. Bodhi leads the group to Galen Urso's research facility on the planet of Edu. And Cashin has Galen lined up in his sights, but he elects not to kill him. Jin reveals herself to her father just moments before rebel bombers attack the facility. Galen ends up being mortally wounded in the attack and dies in his daughter's arms. Jin and her crew are able to escape on board a stolen Imperial cargo shuttle, and Krennic is summoned by Darth Vader to answer for the Death Star attack on Jetta. Krennic tries to obtain Vader's support in order to gain an audience with the Emperor, and instead Vader force chokes him and orders him to make sure that no other breaches occur. Jin goes to the Rebel Alliance Council and proposes a plan to steal the schematics for the Death Star, utilizing the Rebel fleet. But she fails to gain approval of the Council because they feel victory against the Empire is near impossible at this point. Jin is frustrated at the Council's lack of action, so she and her team lead a small squad of Rebel volunteers in order to raid the databank. They arrive on Scarif in the stolen Imperial ship, which Rook dubs Rogue One. Jin and Cashin don disguises and along with K2SO enter the base while the other rebel volunteers create a diversion. The Alliance discovers the raid as a result of the intercepted Imperial communications and they deploy their fleet in support of the little group. K2 SO sacrifices himself so that Jin and Cashin can retrieve the necessary data. Sharut Imwe is killed after activating a master switch, allowing communication with the rebel fleet, and Bayes Malbus suffers the same fate shortly afterwards. Bodhi Rook is killed by a grenade after informing the rebel fleet that they need to deactivate the planetary shield in order to allow the transmission of the schematics. Rebel Admiral Radis uses a hammerhead corvette in order to destroy two star destroyers, and as a result, the wreckage crashes atop the shield generator, causing the shield to deactivate. Jin and Cashin are able to obtain the schematics but are ambushed by Orson Krennic, who is shot and wounded by Cashin. Jin transmits the schematics to the Rebel command ship, and the Death Star enters orbit just above Scarif, and Grand Moff Tarkin uses another low-powered shot to destroy the Imperial base, killing Orson Krennic, Cashin Andor, and Jin Erso in the process. The Rebel fleet prepares for the jump to hyperspace, but a number of ships are intercepted by Darth Vader and his Star Destroyer. Vader boards a Rebel command ship and slaughters a number of troops in an attempt to regain the schematics. However, one starship is able to escape with the plans on board. And our film ends with a shot of Princess Leia declaring that they have obtained the schematics and it will provide one Fain to the Rebel Alliance. Hope. Once again, as I kind of touched on at the beginning of this review, this film is another one 
that I honestly feel did not need to be made. We already knew that Rebels had stolen the plans to the Death Star, gotten them to Princess Leia, that they had examined them, found a weakness. All that information is given to us in the original Star Wars, Episode 4, A New Hope. Did we really need to see any of that stuff happen? I don't think so. You know, in the grand scheme of things, we knew going into this film that everybody in it was probably going to die because none of these characters really pop up in the future sagas. The only exceptions are Darth Vader. Grand Moff Tarkin, Princess Leia. That's it. None of these other characters exist in the rest of the film saga. So we knew as we started to meet Jin Erso and Cashin and Bodhi, all these characters were going to die. So why get attached to them? so that we can appreciate their sacrifice for the greater fight. Okay, I guess. You know, it's not bad storytelling. Let me just get that out there as well. They tell the story very well. They make you care about these characters that you know are going to perish. They, they weave the tale so well. But did the story really need to exist? That's that's my big question with this one. What do you guys think out there in internet land that are watching this? If you're watching the premiere, let me know over here what you guys think. If you're watching it on demand, let me know down here. But once again, much like Solo, out of fairness, I'm going to give this film three out of five stars. For storytelling, for acting, for action, for drama, it's a good movie. In the grand scheme of Star Wars lore, did it need to exist? I don't think so. And so when you combine those two things, that's why it gets this low of a score for me. Three out of five stars for Solo. Let's make sure we get out there on social media. Get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever-popular hashtag shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade JJ Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Don't forget to get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network. For all your official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt, Dad's Not Always on Wrestling, Stat Boy Sports Bar. Get you your official merchandise for the Jeff Meacham Network, three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo shirt to choose from, Meachamania, Talk Wrestling, and so much more. Tomorrow, back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, 
when I will bring you yet another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. Make sure you tune in to see what Princess Leia was talking about and that hope as I discuss the original Star Wars, 1977's Episode 4, A New Hope, starring Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, Peter Cushing, Alec Guinness, Anthony Daniels, Kenny Baker, Peter Mayhew, David Prowse, and James Earl Jones. You're not going to want to miss out tomorrow as we go back to the official Skywalker saga with the film that started it all, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Definitely going to be a good one to discuss and get my teeth into. For all of you guys that have been tuning in today during the live stream, leaving your comments over here, thank you very much, everybody. I greatly appreciate the show of support. All you guys that watch on demand, leave your comments down here. Once again, thank you guys so much. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the love and the support and the views from all my loyal viewers. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time, and may the Force be with you.